All right, time to bore the center of it out. We're using an inch and a half diameter boring bar, uh, WNMG style of insert right here, but this is a PP chip breaker, so it's uh, it has sort of a positive geometry cutting action. Less tool pressure than another style of insert there that we typically use. Center, the center of this is uh, approximately two inch right now. And we want to open this up. We just call out a dimension of two and one sixteenth. And that'll give it a sixteenth clearance of that pin to slide through there. And then we're going to come in here and counterbore the ends to, I believe it's two and a quarter. I got the bar stuck out nine inches. So that'll allow me to get over halfway of this. So we'll get half of it counterbore it, do our chamfer, then we'll flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to touch off and make a little cut there to see where we're at because I would like to I would like to cut this in one pass. We're going to dial in 50 thousandths and make a little counterbore here. find my calipers about 25 26 thousandths right there so we still got a little ways to go may do is just go ahead and do it in two passes that way we can have a nice looking cleanup pass through there and it doesn't look so rough I think that's what we'll do let's just go ahead and it won't take that long to go down through there we'll go ahead and finish this out and then and just clean it up like that there just make a little spring pass to clean it up I'm going to set this dial indicator to zero once we get it about where I want it there. Right there. This spring pass that this bar is going to do is going to put it right at the 2 and 1 16th diameter. So we're just going to run it through there right where it's sitting. Let's just go ahead and verify that I'm on size up in there. So we're going to use a telescoping gauge, get us a measurement. Two inches, 60 thousandths. So that's going to give that pin 30 thousandths clearance all the way around there. So we're going to shorten this bar up right here and then work on our counterboard next for our bushing. All right, this is a sleeve that I have because these are actually metric bores in here. So I got a sleeve to take up the gap of the uh, imperial size tooling that goes in there that I have going in there. Anything right along here is going to be fine. I'm just coming on a little bit further. We're going to be counter boring two inches deep. So there's four inches right there, there and about. Just line it up with the scale there. And I'm just looking down that way to see if that scale looks nice and level. It looks good right there.
I'm gonna use this dial indicator. Our bushing is two inches long right there, so that's that's how deep. He said just make it where you, they press in flush with the end there. So just go two inches. I'm gonna use this two inch travel indicator right here. Zero and zero. Tool is cleared, so we're gonna run this guy in. And it's 5,000 shy, so we'll we'll face that shoulder out on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and move this one down out of the way. Go back down with our one inch travel. And then set this one back to a zero here. All right, so again, there's our bushing. And with this being split, you know, it's over two inches on the bore, over two and a quarter. But this just a nominal size. So it has a one eighth wall thickness right there. All right, so all you do is just bore your, your part to two and a quarter, and then this will compress whenever you go to press it in there, and it'll put it right on that two inch size, but it should have a little clearance in there for your pen to slide through. So we're just gonna hit two and a quarter on our counter board. Chip isn't quite performing the way I was hoping it would. I'm hoping it'll break here and start breaking the inside. It doesn't want to stop. Should be getting pretty close. I'm just going to have it split to where I make two finish passes right here and land right on uh, two and a quarter. Alright, this is going to be our finish cut through here. Should have about 15 thousandths to uh, come out. Get a measurement with our telescope gauge and our mic and see where we're at. So we've got 10, 11, 12. So it's 5, 10, 11, 12 and a half thousandths. I'm going to do it one more time just to verify it. Get 12 thousandths that time. All right, so 12 thousandths, nice little finish pass. And what I'm doing, this one right here, I'm gonna use some of this Mystic Metal Mover. It's a really thin cutting wall with low fuming. And I find that whenever you're trying to do these bores like this with these carbide bars, if you have a little bit of lubricant in there, it helps the chips from trying to bind up and rub in there and create high spots where the chips are rubbing into the, to the wall there. 12 thousandths we make our finished cut so you might have noticed where some of those chips were coming around right there and sometimes they get caught up between the bar and the wall of the part that you're for it and it puts scratches in there, it kind of makes a little gall marks. That cutting oil helps prevent those high spots from, from galling in there. We get to the end of the cut, I'm going to face that back shoulder out. I'll feed it in another five thousandths. There's our zero. Go in five and just back face it. That's it. Our bore is nice and smooth. It feels great. We'll go ahead and snap a measurement on it, just see where we hit our size here. It looks like I got it right on, right on what I wanted. There's, as you can see, the telescope gauge hanging right there. It, I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro. 250 thousandths. So. All we got left now is we need to chamfer. I'm going to reach in there and chamfer that side too, just because that's I like. 
I don't want somebody to reach in over their finger and cut their finger open on that sharp edge back there. This is another uh, tool bit bar that we're using, and I always keep a chamfering tool in this just for doing stuff like this. So I'll just, just gonna look down in there. First thing I'm gonna do is bring the tool tip up close to the bore. So I know that we'll cover that shoulder. I'll go in there and just kind of watch it. I know you can't see it, but you can listen for it. Hear it? Now you can see it. We got that sharp edge cut off. Let's go ahead and do this one while we're here. That's it. Now I still need to do the outside, so I'm going to swap tools out. All right, there she is. That side is done. I will reach in here with a little bit of emery right on this edge where we chamfered it. And even though we chamfered it, there's still a little bit of a sharp edge where the bevel meets the, the straight bore. And we need to soften that just a little bit. Take a little piece of emery just like that. Just soften that edge up. That's all you got to do. Perfect. All right, this guy is uh, ready to be swapped around. All right, it's time to get this part flipped around. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, sky hook again. Make it a little bit easier on me. So just uh, loosen the jaw in front of me. Loosen the jaw up top. Just trying to eyeball the center of it right here. Make it as level as I can get it. That's pretty good. like that and then I get my finger caught in the mouse trap again <laughs> and then so we're lined up in our undercut there for the uh, steady rest right in the center of that we'll come down and just snug these two and all we should have to do is come right back in here where the indicator and indicate this right here and this should be running nice and true right there now I do have people that ask me about how heavy this thing is and it's not that heavy at all. This is all tubular steel, so there's not a lot of solidness to this except for this base right here. If I remember right, the spec is 28 pounds for this, this total unit. All right, so I'll show you how I do it. And I usually just stand it up right there against the wall. I don't really have a mount for it to sit on, so I just stand it up over there. Just take and you just pull straight up on it, and just like that. Not too bad at all. I'll support it right there and just set it down. Start with a little whey oil on this journal right here. And we'll go ahead and get it indicated in. So we're not out too bad. About 15 thousandths. Snugging the highs, making sure that jaws are tight. That almost got most of it out of there. About two thousandths left. Just tighten the highs and try to move that last one or two thou without having to loosen the jaws there. So that's moving within a half a thousandths between two of the lines. That should be good. And I'm looking right here and making sure that I don't see it lifting and going around like that because that can still happen because of the way we're chucked back here. 
I think that we're uh, running nice and straight though. So we'll go ahead and move our indicator and we can close this guy up right here. All right, we're ready to machine. This is just gonna be an exact duplicate of what I just shared with you, facing the end, boring it halfway, and then doing the counter pour. So I'm not gonna bore you with too much of the same footage. I might give you a couple highlights of the uh, final machining right there. So, but to start off, get the uh, headstock engaged. We we'll go ahead and put a little more oil on here, and then just lightly come down with this until it touches. That's going to expand just a little bit as it warms up there. And I'm feeding the wrong direction, so I like to slow it down when I change that feed direction. It's 20 thou, let's see if that cleans it up. It's looking good there. Lathe work is done. We're going to take it out of here, go to the middle machine, drill it and tap it for our two grease irks. We moved over here to the little mill where we're going to do our drilling and tapping. I'm using the uh, piranha jaws here to hold this. The, uh, the height of these allows you to uh, clamp up to, I believe it was right around uh, four and five eighths or four and three quarter diameter and uh, hold that. So we've got that clamped in there now. And this is just routine stuff. I've shown this a, a bunch of times. I'll use an edge finder. We'll come right in here on this journal that I machined and we'll find the center. And from the end, we're gonna move in two and three sixteenths. So the bushings you see, they don't have a place to uh, come across with the, uh, the grease. And all they did was they had a grease cirque right behind the bushing on each side right there. And so we'll just come in like two and three sixteenths, drill and tap our hole. It'll put the hole right behind the, uh, the bushing here. I'm just trying to grab this little drill to show you. We'll come in right behind it like that. You know, and whenever they start greasing this thing, once they put it together, they can pack it full of grease. You'll have two grease circs there, 
And so all I gotta do is fill it up and there's nowhere for the grease to go but out. So it'll fill this little cavity up here and it'll squish through and come out the sides right there. So that'll work just fine, just like so. So we'll go ahead and get centered up and uh, we'll show you one uh, getting it drilled and tapped. All right, that's the end of it there. So we'll, we'll move it down the appropriate amount. I'll just use a center drill to spot it. Not gonna go all the way in there, just do a little spot like that. And then I'm going to cross drill it with a 3 16th diameter drill bit. And then we will drill it our tap size, which is going to be a uh, letter R drill bit, which is 339 thousandths diameter. tap size we won't go all the way through with this one just go down deep enough that we know our tap will clear About like so I'll go ahead and um, let's chamfer the hole just like that and we'll go ahead and tap it so just going to use a spring-loaded center in the drill chuck. I've got a uh, Greenfield number six tap wrench and then we've got our 1 8 diameter tap here. 1 8 NPT tap. have to go real deep with these for these grease jerks. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to check it. And I've got the little 7 16th wrench here to go ahead and put a little torque on it to make sure. So, oh yeah, it's going down in there good. All right, so that'll work right there. I'm going to take it back out so that I can clean it good. All right, so I'm just going to move down there, repeat what we just did, and uh, this thing will be finished up. All right, guys, there it is. This guy is finished up with the exception of washing it out, washing the OD. I'm going to get all that cutting oil out of it for him, wash the OD down. I've only got one of these bushings, but Joe will press these things in himself. He's got a, he's got a big press down there, and they will, they will get those pressed in. So... Uh, fun project to share with you a lot of basic, you know principles when it comes to uh, lathe work getting getting it indicated truing up a long piece like that getting your OD skinned and uh, everything running true for the steady rest, you know, just a lot of uh, Basic stuff there, but I enjoy it and that's the that's the kind of stuff that uh, I, I like doing there. So I don't know if this is going to be in the video But it could be what I was going to say is I'm going to try to sneak down there at some point point. And see if I can maybe get a shot of this thing installed or maybe being installed. Uh, I will ask Joe if he will contact me and let me know when it's going on. But believe me when I say, he stays busy down there. He's got a fast-paced business. He's being pulled 100 directions all the time between um, all the guys, you know, getting with him on what's got to be done. Walk-in customers constantly down there. Uh, he's just, he's tough to get a hold of sometimes because he's got so many things going on. And you know, taking videos and pictures isn't something that Joe really thinks about. That's just not part of his daily routine. So um, I will I will see if I can get with him and see if I can get a shot of this thing finished up for you. Uh, if I don't, I apologize, but that's just the way it goes, and we'll have plenty more projects to share with you. So. This is the truck that the boom goes on. You can see 
hooks in right there and right there. Well, it turns out I was able to get a little video here uh, at Joe's shop. Uh, I had to mute these last few clips because they had the radio playing, and you know how music is on YouTube. It's a no-go. But uh, anyway, you can see the uh, the boom there, and what they did, they cut the end of it off right there because that, that pin boss was completely worn out. So they just cut the tubes. They got some more tubes that they're going to butt weld in there and uh, slide the pin boss in there and get that welded as well. This is Howie, one of Joe's top guys in the shop there. He's he's the one that's tackling this job, getting it done. Thought I'd get a couple videos of him burning in some 7018s. Uh, I, I took a look at it before he started burning those rods, and he runs a, a root pass 6010 and then goes in there and, and fills it in with the 7018. So I didn't get any more footage after this, but I do know that they got the, uh, the boom truck back together and down the road. And then they sent another one right after that, same kind of repair. Uh, they're uh, pretty hard on these machines.